It just means you know the source of all truth, the source of all goodness, the source of all understanding and wisdom and knowledge, kindness and love and acceptance and all of it. You know it's in there. So that attitude in and of itself can be a conduit to you getting to that understanding. Whereas, why would God even design us with the ability to be tempted? Why would he even do that? Because I encounter non-believers a lot, and they'll use that as a reason why they don't believe in God. That proves there is no God. Or they'll say, if there is such a God, he is evil, so why should I believe in him? Because our ability to be tempted has led to so much destruction, so much evil, so many bad things. That makes him the author of evil, and so on and so forth. Just so you know, this kind of comes under the broad headline of perspective. You need to be able to tweak your perspective, or at least consider that your perspective is not very good. It's flawed. All of us have flawed perspectives. And that's to be understood. That's natural. I'm not criticizing it. We have our own perspective as individuals who have been influenced by our environment, by all the things around us. We do the best we can with what we know. But you believe what you believe, and you have to go on that until you get something else. And what I want to talk about is the opportunity to get something else, to get the something else. God's perspective. So, i got some notes here I'm going to be consulting. The first one is, one, another one I get in discussions with people, and they insist and they argue and they deny the possibility that God can be tempted. Well, we're made in His image and His likeness, so He can be tempted. He responds in a different way, and we may not even fully understand the meaning of the word tempted, because He doesn't respond in an evil way, but still, He can be tempted. We responded in a poor way when we were first tempted. That is something that is true. Because if it's not true, then it's not true that he made us in his image and his likeness. Second note I have is, temptation is good or bad according to the individual's perspectives. And that's what I want to get into next is the perspective of assuming the fact that you can be tempted is automatically a negative. It's automatically a weakness. Well, if you share it with God, then apparently it can be used for something good. Even if you don't know how to respond perfectly, you have a God that can use your responses to something good. That is something to consider because God is no fool. He did not make us do the things we did. But that doesn't mean he didn't have a contingency plan for when we did. He didn't make us do it. I know that might sound like a contradiction to some people. I don't believe he made us do anything. But he's God. He's smart. He's very intelligent. He can see that there are certain things that we would do. But he used it to his advantage. And that's what I want to start to get into now. One thought is a kind of abstract one. But it's not totally abstract because I have this temptation and I respond to it all the time. Is We can respond to the temptation to know God. And there's obviously different ways of doing that. There's very religious ways of doing it and becoming self-righteous, claiming to know God above all other people. Or there's just the temptation to know Him in a, like you would want to know someone else. You meet someone new and you're preoccupied with thoughts of them and being around them and wanting to get to know them. That's a temptation I suffer from, if you have put it that way. I'm always thinking about him. I'm always wanting to understand him better. I'm always wanting to know him more. I give in to that temptation. Note number four here. God knew if he let us fail by our choice, he could create something even better. In other words, he could create something even better than what Adam and Eve had in the garden. And that may be something you've never considered before, but really think about it. I'm going to talk about it a little bit here, but on your own, I suggest you think about it. Do we have something better now than Adam and Eve had before the fall? Certainly what we are going towards in heaven is something better than they had. But I think even now we can have something better than what they had. I put note 4B. As such... 
we can now be included in creating that, quote, something better, something more personal and more intimate than what Adam and Eve had. So, in other words, they were with their God, their God was with them, they were loved and accepted, but they hadn't fallen. You and I, we've all fallen, and God has created a situation where we can be loved and accepted as fallen beings, fallen children, who have now turned to trust in Him. We started off not trusting in Him, and now we can be reunited with Him. So we, in effect, are joined with Him in this work, not only on our own behalf, but on the behalf of others, as God seeks to create new life in this world. Because all of us are born dead to Him. Adam was created alive to Him, showed his mistrust for God, showed that he did not believe in his God, and chose to trust himself. So then he died to his God. You and I are born dead to our God, and we can learn of him and his goodness and his kindness and his patience and his love, and then turn towards him and become his children, which is even better. I know that I have sinned. I know that I still sin, and I will never stop sinning, and yet I am loved by my God. Adam didn't have that. Eve didn't have that. We have something even better. But he had to go through this process to bring this about. I'm sure Adam and Eve now know that they are perfectly loved and accepted by their God. It's just that to get there, he had to allow us to be in on it. He had to allow us to make those choices and then be given the opportunity to see our mistakes, see that there's something wrong with us, and that we need something outside of ourselves, namely our Creator, because He's a Creator in more ways than one. He's a designer. He created my physical life, yes, but He also designed certain attributes I have, like the ability to be tempted. And that's what I'm asking you to consider here, that that was very intentional and for a reason and for a good reason, so that through that ability to be tempted, through that weakness, I can see the strength and the goodness of my God. And finally, point five here, which could have been point one, that said, to see it this way, I first establish that he does things for good and very intentional reasons. So, I think a lot of times in religion, even those of us who love God and appreciate God and worship God and want to know God, there are certain things we don't understand about Him. And we kind of veer off from those subjects. That's just too hard to understand. I don't, I don't get it. Or we ignore it. Because it seems too big and none of the smart people around us really talk about it or explain it or we just kind of hear, well, He's God and He can do what He wants to do. Or, God is sovereign, therefore, kind of like a, a, a heavenly, because I said so, that's why. But when you establish that even though I don't understand, even though I don't know, I can learn and I can know someday if I keep seeking why he did it and that it will make sense to me. Because he wants me to have these things, these things being understanding who my God is. Those are the greatest things. That's why he said... If you pray believing you already have it, you'll have it. Because I already have His love for me. He knows the thoughts that He thinks towards me. He thinks good thoughts towards me. And I may not be ready for all of them at this time, but as I seek believing that He is a good God, I can then eventually receive them when I'm ready for them. But He's the only one that knows when I'm ready for them. It's just that I, I seek with that attitude. Not to the eyes of judgment that that's wrong, God, even though I don't understand it. You see there the difference there? Because when we're in religion, sometimes we can judge God. I've talked to a lot of people, and they really do judge Him. They just don't understand. It could be a lot of things. I know this good person, but he doesn't believe in God, so why should he go to hell? He does all these nice things. They really do judge God because they don't have their... They don't have their understanding rooted and grounded on the rock of Christ. 
which is truth itself. That doesn't mean you know all truth. It just means you know the source of all truth, the source of all goodness, the source of all understanding and wisdom and knowledge, kindness and love and acceptance and all of it. You know it's in there. So that attitude in and of itself can be a conduit to you getting to that understanding. Whereas the judgmental one can be a block. How is he going to show you something when he knows that you're judging him, when he knows that you think what he does is evil? It doesn't mean that you have to mouth, oh, he's good, he's good, I know you're good, God, I know you're good, even though you don't understand it. It's okay to let him know you don't understand. It's just that you've got to first establish that I know what he does is good, even though I don't understand it. And that's not something you just snap your fingers and come to the conclusion that takes a long time. It took me years to get to that. There's things I still don't understand. But I'm confident that those things I don't understand will make sense to me someday because I've had so many along the way come to make sense that before I used to think, wow, that was harsh. That, that might have even been cruel. And I was judging him. I no longer do that, even though I still don't understand things because I've learned all those others that there turned out to be a big blind spot on my part. A huge blind spot. Just like the whole thing with temptation here. You, you might think, well, geez, God, that just doesn't seem necessary. Look at all the calamity. Look at all the horrors and the mayhem and the crime and the death and the, all this stuff. You could have just said, no, I'm going to create them this way. But the one thing I won't give them is the ability to be tempted. They will never be tempted by anything. Hey, simple. Problem's over. Fall doesn't happen. Nothing bad ever happens. You might think so, and I'm not going to be able to explain to you why that's wrong, because that is a personal one-on-one -on -one thing that you can only get from him. He's the only one that can show you. I, I just try to lead you there to the edge of the water, so to speak, so that you can see this. So consider that kind of like a door opening, and why being created with the ability to be tempted is actually a very good thing. And I don't know if I'll be talking more about this or if this is a standalone. But either way, thanks for listening. And God continue to bless us all as we seek his beautiful face in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.